We're here today to help the family, the Alvarado family. Reuter Alvarado was shot. He's seven years old, and he's now facing catastrophic injuries, and he has a long road to recovery. This road is not only painful, but it's also very expensive and has cost a financial burden on the family. This family couldn't afford to take two weeks off of work, but they have been in the hospital for over 10 days. They are home now, but they're gonna have so much need. And I'm asking Houstonians to please support this family. Um, when we hear that a crime victim survived the shooting, we, we have a sigh of relief. But the truth is that the victim alone and their family are faced to deal with the consequences of crime. And right now, I have never seen a seven-year-old with such catastrophic injuries so optimistic. He is a happy child, and he's just, he told me that all he wants to do is get better so he can play again. We need to help this family. I'm asking all Houstonians to please look it into your hearts if you can. Donate to their GoFundMe. We have attached a link. And if you can't donate, please pray for his speedy recovery. We also want to thank the physicians that saved this little boy's life. We have an amazing medical team here in Houston. I also want to thank HPD because they do have surveillance video and they do have photos of the person responsible, the suspect of doing this crime. What they were doing was shooting at each other when one of those bullets hit the seven-year-old in his abdomen. His large intestine was pierced twice. At this point, he can't even use the restroom in a normal fashion. It is devastating to see that our children are being harmed by senseless gun violence. This needs to come to an end. We cannot do this, Houston. We got to do better. If you're that angry, pull over. There's other ways of dealing with our anger. We cannot fire a gun at somebody else because we're upset. That bullet hit this child. And to the person who shot that gun and shot this child, you are responsible for his injuries. And you need to come and turn yourself in and face justice. There's clear images of the individual. Everybody needs to understand that even if you didn't mean to shoot that person, you still did. This is why we need to be responsible gun owners. And this is not the way we should behave. I thank everybody for coming out today. Representative Jean Wu, Andy with Crime Stoppers, and all the media. And again, I ask Houston to look into your heart and see if you can help this family. We're doing our best, HPD's doing their best, and we hope to bring positive exposure to this little boy and his family. In Espanol. Estamos aquí hoy día para representar la familia Alvarado. El niño Reuter fue baleado el, en abril 14 afuera de un apartamento. Dos coches iban manejando cuando se empezaron a balear entre ellos. Una bala perdida le pegó al niño en el estómago. Él ahorita ya salió del hospital. Y yo sé que cuando escuchamos que las víctimas del crimen sobreviven, nos sentimos alegres. Pero la realidad es que ellos tienen una carretera muy difícil que pasar para ellos que se para que ellos regresen a la normalidad. Este niño y solo este niño y su familia van a tener que pagar las consecuencias por un cobarde que decidió darle balazos a otro coche. Está mal. Está mal lo que hicieron y sin, aunque no quisieron darle la bala a ese niño, igual lo hicieron. Cuando uno dispara una pistola, tiene que ser responsable por sus acciones. El niño hoy está sufriendo. Esta familia no ha podido regresar a la normalidad. Y como muchos de nosotros, ellos no pueden sostener dos semanas sin trabajo, sin pago, porque los viles no paran. Los, sigue, los viles siguen. Y este niño ahora va a tener muchos años de recuperación para que él regrese a la normalidad. Yo le estoy pidiendo a la ciudad de Houston que, por favor, si pueden donar algo para ayudar a esta familia, que por favor lo hagan. Y si no pueden donar, que por favor oren por la recuperación del niño. Él es magnífico, aunque él tiene ahorita, no tiene la función de ir al baño como todos nosotros podemos. Él todavía está tan feliz y solo dice que él se quiere recuperar para, ser, para jugar. Por favor, Houston, busquen en sus corazones si pueden ayudar a esta familia. Se los agradezco bastante y hay que comportarnos mejor. Si están enojados, no valen. Paren su coche, tomen, respiren profundo. Esto no está bien. Por cada bala que ustedes tiran, pueden pensar que hay una vida que ustedes pueden afectar. No vale la pena. Este niño no, no mereció esa bala. Les agradecemos todo mucho a, la, a los medios, el representante Jean Wu y Andy de Crime Stoppers, que siempre nos han apoyado. Muchas gracias.
ciudad. Hay que comportarnos mejor y hay que orar por este niño. Reuter Alvarado, muchas gracias. I'm Andy Kahn, Director of Victim Services for Crime Stoppers of Houston. And piggybacking on what uh, April said, this young seven-year-old boy could have succumbed like April's niece, Arlene Alvarez. Similar scenarios, indiscriminately firing bullets, never knowing where they're going to land, but now it's landed. This family is in dire need of help, and we're asking the community to step up to the plate in two ways, helping this family rebuild their lives. Secondly, Crime Stoppers has an up to a $5,000 reward for any information leading up to the arrest of the suspect and or suspect's responsible in this. We have a clear image of who the shooter is. We have a clear image of the vehicle that the shooter was driving. So we're asking for your help in both cases. And I'm just going to touch on a few things right now. The Crime Victim Compensation Fund, this family is eligible for. They are eligible for medical expenses, counseling, loss of wages, and a very interesting little provision that we added in 2019 in a very similar situation. And that involved a four-year-old little boy named Sir Romeo, who was just watching TV very in the second floor of his grandma's house. Street fire erupted. A bullet struck him. He had six months of rehabilitation. When it was time for him to be released, the family reached out to me and asked if there was anything from the Crime Victim Compensation Fund to help them because they didn't want to bring him back to the same place he was shot. That time we find out that domestic violence and sexual assault victims are eligible for relocation expenses. I worked with State Representative Garnett Coleman and State Senator Boris Mile. We sponsored a bill. Texas became the first state in the nation to pass legislation that allows any families whose children were the victim of attempted murder, and that's what happened here, to be eligible to apply for relocation expenses. And it's called the Soromeo Law. This family will be eligible to relocate from this apartment and move into a more suitable environment. And that brings up the fact that I implore all the public, public officials, elected officials, we have got to start talking about the cost of victimization. Nobody wants to talk about this. We have everything in place for offenders, for defendants, but when someone has to endure a situation like this, and this will be for eternity, the out-of-pocket expenses that this will take to rebuild this seven-year-old boy's life, nobody wants to talk about. Nobody wants, there's nothing out there to help them. And that needs to be changed. And it's time we start talking about what it costs to be a crime victim in the city of Houston. It's astronomical. And in a strange way, all we're asking for is this family to be treated with the same dignity and rights of respect that offenders and defendants have. And that is to have their abilities, their medical, their counseling, their food taken care of. That's just quid pro quo equal treatment. So on behalf of Crime Stoppers, we're going to do whatever we can to help this family rebuild their life, and we're also going to do what we can to get this suspect in custody. And to the suspect out there that indiscriminately shot bullets, that struck a seven-year-old child, we're going to do everything we can to get you in custody, and we're going to do everything we can to make sure you don't breathe free air for quite a long time. Thank you. Thank you so much. My name is Gene Wu. Uh, I'm the state representative for House District 137. My name is spelled G-E-N-E-W-U. -E -E um, this is another senseless, violent, gun-related tragedy in our community. Every single week, every single month, we keep hearing about all these people who are just innocent bystanders, who just were just going about their normal, everyday lives and they were hit with gunfire that was not even directed at them. This is occurring too often and too frequently, and we're sick of it. The amount of unregistered, unlicensed guns in the hands of criminals in our state, in our city, is, is outrageous. And we have to do something about it. But that's for another time. 
Today, I'm here to make sure to deal with three points. One is that our office is going to do everything we can to work with this family to make sure they're taken care of, from including dealing with their hospital bills to making sure that the crime victim compensation package is taken care of to working with them to protect their immigration status and everything else. Two, we're going to work with the Houston Police Department to find the people who did this. It's not just the shooter, but the people who were involved in the complete shooting itself. We want everybody. And what's important to us is that the community is aware of this and the community is willing and able to come forward and report this as witnesses. If you witness this crime, if you know what happened, if you know the people who were involved, you know where they are, come call us. Call Houston Police Department right now, call Crime Stoppers, and let us know what this information is. Because our communities will never be safer as long as criminals think that they can get away with these kind of things in this community. When we respond and say, no, no more, we will report you and the police will make sure that we're okay, we're going to get you. And that's what we're after. And I know there's been a lot of concerns within the community around here that because of laws like SB4 and other sorts of crackdowns and other laws are being passed that people are afraid to come out and speak. Just know that those laws are right now are being suspended by courts and the Houston Police Department has said point blank, if you are a victim, if you are a witness, we will absolutely never ever ask you for your immigration status and we're going to hold them to that. And so if you are afraid of coming forward, we're telling you right now, don't be afraid. There are people around you that will have your back. If you are a witness to this and you help us solve this crime, we're going to protect you and we'll make sure of that. And lastly, we want everyone to make a serious consideration to help donate to this family. We're going to do what we can through the state, but that money isn't that much. What, and these families, these are working class families that do not have the ability to lose even a single day's worth of work before they go under. And now this family has been out for two weeks. Now that's not even talking about the medical bills that might start piling up. We are asking you, if you have the ability, please, if it's a dollar or if it's $10, please donate what you can to the GoFundMe um, account and help them out. We need to get them through these at least a couple of months or whatever it is we can do. We need all the help we can get for this family and this child. Let's come together as a community and, and, and let's put our arms around them. Thank you so much. Un último mensaje en español. Vamos a hablar lo que dijo el eh, Andy y el representante Jean Wu en español. No tengan miedo si vieron algo de reportarlo a Crime Stoppers o a HPD. El número de Crime Stoppers es 713-222-TIPS, T-I-P-S. No tengan miedo si son, no, aquí no tienen estatus inmigratorio. Nunca nadie les va a preguntar de su estatus inmigratorio. Ahorita las leyes como SB4 no están siendo consideradas por la policía de Houston. Lo han dicho en público que ellos no van a enforzar esas leyes. Por favor, no tengan miedo. Si vieron algo, por favor, entreguen a estas personas. Y es completamente anónimo. Les agradecemos mucho su tiempo hoy en día. Gracias. Yes. Um, so, um, April, I know that, like, you're, you know, you, you guys know how it is to be in this position, but you guys unfortunately lost your loved one. How is it to see another child go be a victim of, you know, a bullet like it definitely hits home because the family, the Alvarez family knows what that's like. On the way to dinner, this family was at a, this family was simply walking back home. And it's wrong. It's wrong. And you're never prepared for a situation like this. He is very fortunate that he survived. However, survival doesn't necessarily mean that it's that everything is okay. They have a long, painful road to recovery. I, when it comes to children, I can't stay home. As many of you know, there's a lot, been a lot of developments in our case. We've been very busy. But when it comes to children, we're always gonna show up because it honors Arlene and we're gonna keep her legacy alive. Every time that we can help somebody, we're going to in her name and in her honor.
representative, I know that you yourself have children, and seeing this little boy like this, how, I mean, I'm sure I, it cuts to the heart as well. I, I think the most terrifying part of this is the fact that it was so random, that these people were simply doing what they did every single day, just go about their business. Um, and what that says is, is this can be any of us, right? We could be driving down 59 and somebody gets into a beef because they honked or somebody got too close and people start exchanging gunfire. It's that kind of stuff that is truly terrifying because it's not like a thing where you can say like, oh, I'm just gonna avoid this neighborhood. I'm not gonna go here like late at night, whatever it is. It's none of that. This is just something that randomly happened in the middle of the day because idiots had guns. Right? And until we say, well, maybe we shouldn't let idiots have guns, right? Or people who are criminals, people who would use them in this way, maybe we shouldn't let people just random everyday people without any licensing, without training, without education, without insurance, without regulation, just everybody throw a gun in the car. And what we're and this is what we're seeing every single day. Like the number of road rage shootings in the Houston area has I don't increased, I don't know how many hundreds of percentage. Because every idiot has a gun in their car now. And this is the consequence. And until, and again, I don't want to make this political. This is about this family. But that's the frustration. That we know the consequences of the laws that we pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And now we, we act like we don't know what to do about it. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's really what's frustrating and it yeah. makes me angry. This is also the second child that has been indiscriminately shot at because you had a two-year-old little boy mm -hmm. about four or five weeks ago mm -hmm. in Midtown yep. that was also shot by indiscriminate gunfire and survived. So this is at least the second incident within a month that you had two children, yeah. ages seven and two that we know of, that were shot and survived. Yeah, yeah I mean, and not this, you know, like my, my wife's story yesterday mm -hmm. was road raid shooting. Yep. They follow each other, they honk at each other, and somebody whips out a gun and starts shooting. Yep. I mean, at least in that case, they, they arrested the guy who shot. But this is something that happens like every single day now. This used to be a rare occurrence mm -hmm. where people would be for shooting each other in the cars. But now in Houston, it's almost like every day or every, at least every week now. Anything else? 